inside the dry cast storage systems, there's a canister that contains the used or spent fuel. Um, we'll use the horizontal storage system, horizontal storage module, as an example of the loading process. The canister inside the horizontal storage module is oriented in a horizontal configuration. The canisters can all hold up to 87 boiling water reactor assemblies or up to 37 pressurized water reactor assemblies. The canister is placed inside a transfer cask, which is then placed in the spent fuel pool. In the spent fuel pool, it goes in an area which we commonly refer to as the cask loading pit. In this image, that's the circular region at the bottom of the picture. Um, other pools may have a slightly different configuration. Once inside the spent fuel pool, the fuel assemblies are transferred from the racks in the spent fuel pool into the canister, and that's done underwater. Um, Typically, the fuel assemblies are moved after they've been in the spent fuel pool for five years or more for cooling. Once the fuel assemblies are fully loaded into the canister, into the transfer cask, the lid of the transfer cask is lowered down, again, underwater, and placed in the transfer cask. We do all of these operations underwater to provide biological and radiation shielding for the workers. Once the lid is in place, the transfer cask is removed from the water, and the water inside the canister is taken out and replaced with helium. The transfer cask is then taken out of the fuel handling building and moved to the pad where the horizontal storage module is. Once there, it is connected to the horizontal storage module and the canister is moved from the transfer cask into the horizontal storage module to complete the process. Now dry cask storage in either form, horizontal or vertical, at our sites is not a long-term solution for use fuel management. It's simply an interim step until the federal government meets its obligation to remove fuel for, from our sites for ultimate disposal.